Honkai Saro has a lot of characters with a lot of really good light cones as well, but unfortunately Stellar Jades are a limited resource, and so we have to choose carefully who or what we want to pull for. Unless you're an Omega Whale, in which case, thank you for funding this game. Here's how I decide what to pull for as a non-whale. The first thing I consider when pulling for a character is, do you have enough Stellar Jades for your next character or light cone? You obviously can't get what you want if you don't have the funds for it, so make sure you have enough. What I try to do is, if I'm pulling just for a single character in a patch, then I like to save enough for guaranteed, so at least 28,800 Jades. If I want two characters, then I try to double that, but if you're a new player, it might take a while to get to, so try to aim for enough to get you to hard pity, which is about 14,400 Jades. For me, it's actually quite hard to guarantee two characters because there are always new ones every single patch, and I always want to try to pull for at least one of them, except for version 1.5. That one was an easy skip for me since I didn't care about either. There are some other things to consider. Do I really like this character? Honestly, this should be the only thing to consider when pulling for a character, regardless of whether or not they're good for your account. Waifu slash husbando over meta, as they say. And if you want a light cone to make that character even better, then yeah, go for it. But if you also care about how a unit performs in battle, there are a few more things to consider. How much value does this character provide for your account? Do you need this DPS? Do you need a sustain unit for your second team? Do you really need a sixth harmony character? Maybe this character makes an existing team of yours play a lot better. Like for example, Sparkle in a mono quantum team with Ching Chue, or a non mono quantum team with Imbiber de Lune. These two characters use a lot of skill points, and with Sparkle on the team, this will increase your overall damage as well as give you a ton of skill points. Maybe you just want another character to advance forward the Sila on your second team, or to buff your King Wands or Clara follow up attacks, in which both cases, Sparkle is really good. For me, I enjoy Ching Chue's stacking mechanic despite the RNG, as well as Clara's counterattack playstyle, so pulling for Sparkle was a pretty easy choice for me, and also she's just good with Sila. But maybe you don't need Sparkle. Maybe you want to create a new team with a different playstyle from what you're used to because you're bored of your current one. In that case, you'll probably want to get Kafka as she is your bread and butter for dot teams. Or if you want to have a team consisting of follow-up attackers, then Topaz and or Robin is a good place to start as they both provide team-wide follow-up buffs. For me, I have enough hyper carry teams and sometimes the memory of Chaos Turbulence doesn't benefit them in any way, so I need to switch it up. I pulled for Kafka to be the bread to my butter, but I didn't go for Black Swan because I personally don't care much about her character. I know her kit is really good with Kafka because of her defense shred and whatnot, but I'm fine with doing less damage with Gwenyphon. Still gets the job done. This game also hasn't really warranted a reason to build a win DPS for any of the endgame content and if or when that time comes then I can just use Sampo, even though I fucking hate that guy. I pulled for Robin and Topaz because I wanted to have a dedicated follow-up attack team other than Clara. And since I really like Clara's playstyle, why not have more follow-up attackers? And now that I have both follow-up buffers, I plan to get Aventurine on his rerun. I had to skip him because I had to make sure that I had enough for Robin, Topaz, and Firefly. But that's the thing. What if you want more than one character? What if you want two characters? What if you want a character and a Lycone? What if you wanted E2S1? There are a few things you can do. Let's say you wanted Robin and Topaz whose banners are happening at the same time. Generally, Harmony characters are more versatile than other paths, so I would probably pick up Robin, especially if you don't have Ruan Mei, but of course, it depends on the needs of your account. Some reasons for picking up Topaz instead could include needing a fire DPS, enabling a dual DPS comp, or for other reasons. If you still can't decide, then honestly just flip a coin. Whatever result you get is who you should go for, but if the result you get makes you start second guessing, then go for the other one. Something something reverse psychology. But also there's another thing you should think about. This is Topaz's first rerun. It might be worth considering pulling her instead of Robin because new characters will typically get reruns very soon after their debut. Once a character gets their rerun, it's basically up to Mahoyo to decide when they want to rerun the character again. Let's look at Genshin Impact, for example. It's been almost 10 patches since Shenha had her last rerun. I think it's been over a year already. And Nilu hasn't come home in 9 patches. Even Baiju had a second rerun already and he came out after her. Please come home, Nilu. Because of Mahoyo's uncertain rerun schedule, the same could happen to our favorite characters in Honkai Star Rail. So you can prioritize Topaz first, then grab Robin on her rerun. Hopefully she doesn't run with a new character that you want, because then you're gonna be stuck in the same scenario again. If you're worried about power creep though, don't be. Every character is still good in some way. For example, Sila might not be as great as she once was in Memory Chaos, but she still performs really well in Pure Fiction. Some people can reach max points with her, but not me because I'm doing something wrong somewhere. 
apparently. Oh well, Herda Himiko will carry the other side for me. And with the addition of new characters, older characters will be able to stay relevant in the current meta. Like how the addition of Sparkle buffed King Yuan. And remember, waifu slash husbando over meta. Now, once you've decided on the character you want to prioritize, give yourself a goal. A hard stopping point. In my case, I had about 37,000 stellar jades and so I prioritized Robin. I also wanted to make sure that I had enough to guarantee Firefly so I gave myself the following conditions. If I lose the 50-50 on Robin, then I'll keep pulling until I have 20,000 jades left and skip Topaz. If I get Robin early, then I'll pull on Topaz. If I lose the 50-50 on Topaz, then I'll stop pulling. Luckily for me, I got Robin and Topaz early and won both 50-50s, sitting at about 10 tickets and 30,000 jades now for Firefly. If you want to know why I pulled for the characters I got, here you go. For 1.0, I pulled for Sila because there weren't any other quantum DPSs other than Chincho at the time, and with low idolons, Chincho was pretty mid. I also really liked Sila's voice, her character design, and her kit. Getting an extra turn from defeating an enemy is really fun. Regardless, she is the most reliable and consistent DPS character on my team. Maybe I'm just weak for girls with sights. Jing Yuan, I just didn't care about. Love his voice actor though. He's kind of in every game I play. The best bet would be. I've been waiting for this! Let's get in there! Ready to die? This ends now! Swallow your pride! Feel my wrath in pursuit of knowledge! Let me show you what I've learned! This is... the answer! <laughs> Just like we planned! In 1.1, I pulled for a Silver Wolf because I really like her design and I wanted to make a Mono Quantum team in the future. Weakness and planning seemed like a great future-proof mechanic as well. Some people said that she loses value as you pull for more characters, but I don't think that's entirely true. She's extremely versatile and fits in any team that you put her on. Mono Quantum, Akron, Super Break, etc. And for Luotra, I skipped because I also just didn't care about him. And at the time, I didn't need another sustain unit since I figured Bailu and Natasha were enough. For 1.2, I skipped Blade because I didn't care. And for Kafka, I actually skipped her because I heard about Fu Xuan and I figured that she'd be more valuable for my account. I also ran out of jades from Silverwolf's banner so I just opted to save. I eventually picked up Kafka during her rerun. For 1.3, as much as I like Imbibitor Lunae's design, I had to skip him for Fu Xuan. She made every single battle less worrisome except in Golden Gears where she kinda just gets one shot sometimes. But no one cares about that game mode so it's fine. For 1.4, I pulled for Jing Lu because I love crazy cryo girls who can destroy me. What? For Topaz, I had to skip her because I heard about Ron Mei and was low on Jades from Jing Lu's banner, so I saved instead. And as you know, I eventually picked up Topaz on her rerun. For 1.5, easy skip. Didn't care about the characters, even though I know that Hua Hua is great for Clara, but not enough to warrant a pull from me. For 1.6, Ron Mei. Same reason as Jing Lu. What? For 2.0, you already know why from earlier. 2.1, Acheron because Raiden Mei. I actually also really wanted Adventuring, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough for Robin, Topaz, and Firefly, so sacrifices had to be made. I'll pull him on his rerun for sure though. Anyway, that's all for me. Good luck on the rest of your gacha journey. Peace.